In this video, we're going to do a quick walkthrough of how you can build a vendor onboarding workflow using Nintex Workflow Cloud integrated with Box and Nintex Sign. If you'd like to download a copy of this workflow, there is a template in the Nintex Process Accelerator Gallery at gallery.nintex.com. Simply go to the Workflows section, Nintex Workflow Cloud, enter your tenant ID, and then scroll down to the Vendor Onboarding Workflow and hit I want this download now. Once you've confirmed your tenant, this will actually import the workflow directly into your NWC environment. However, in today's video, we're actually going to be building this workflow from scratch. The first part of this workflow is the start event. This workflow is going to kick off when a new file is uploaded to our box folder. So what we'll do is we'll select our box connector, and then we'll select the event of new file. While I already have a pre-configured connection here in my NWC tenant, if you'd like to add a new connection, you can do so from this page. This will ask for a connection name, and then we'll ask you to authorize against your box environment. Given that I already have my connection configured, we'll go ahead and cancel out of that, and we need to provide it a path where this file is going to appear. In my example, our files will be uploaded to our contracts folder, and with that, we've completed our start event configuration. With our start event configured, the first action that we're going to add to our canvas is the action set. The action set allows us to naturally group different actions together, and in this case, this will be pulling in our contact information from Salesforce. Within the action set, we'll want to bring over a query record action from our action toolbox. We're going to be looking for a contact that has the same email address as the user that created the file in Box. To understand which user created the file in Box, we do need to go back into our start event and update one of our start event variables. In this case, we'll also get the name, file ID, and path, as well as the file variable. These will then all become start variables within our workflow. Now we can go back into our query record action and update our condition. Once our condition has been configured, we're actually going to store the records that are found into a collection. To do this, we'll create a new variable and we'll go ahead and we'll call this contact IDs. Because there should only be one contact that has the same email as the created by email in our Salesforce instance, we're actually going to use a get item from collection action to extract that email out of our collection variable and into a text variable. This will then be our contact ID, which we will use throughout the rest of the workflow. Next, we will utilize several retrieve a record actions to pull back both the contact information within Salesforce, the account owner within Salesforce, and the account information. However, as you can see, when you have several actions of the same type in order, they might start getting a little bit confusing. Let's go ahead and update these to have more logical names to let us know as a workflow designer what these actions are doing. As a workflow designer, we always want to make sure that our actions have logical names so that it's not only easy for us to come back and see what we were doing in our workflow design, but it's also easy for others to understand what is happening in the workflow when they see it for the first time. It's also important to note that in this example, we're working with the field names from my Salesforce instance. The field names might be slightly different when working in your own Salesforce instance or other systems of record. Once we've completed getting the necessary information out of Salesforce, we can then start the approval process for this new contract that's being uploaded into Box. To start with, we'll look for our branch by stage action, and we'll go ahead and drag that onto the canvas. In this particular process, we will have four different branches. We'll go ahead and add these now. The first branch will be internal review, 
This is where the account owner will be reviewing the contract. The second branch will be customer review, where the contract will get sent back to the customer if there need to be some changes after the internal review. Next, we would send it through our legal review. And finally, we will sign the document and send it back to the vendor for filing. When working with the branch by stage action, we also need to set an initial stage. In this case, it will be the internal review stage. Next, within the first three branches, we're gonna add some task actions. In this case, we're gonna use the assign a task action and we'll go ahead and copy this into each one of the first three branches. The first task through the internal review, we'll go ahead and name review submitted contract. And we'll go ahead and configure this as an express approval. We'll give the task a name and description, and then we'll update our outcomes so that they make a little bit more sense. In this case, it would be an updated contract or an approved contract. We're then going to assign this to the owner email. We'll update our subject to new contract for review. And then I already have my message body saved, so I'm just gonna go ahead and enter this now. But you can do this dynamically through the action configuration. Now that you know how to configure the first task action, I'm gonna go ahead and speed up a little bit and configure the next two before we take a look at how you can do e-signature within Nintex Workflow Cloud. All right, now that our tasks have been configured, the last thing that we need to do is send this document out to be signed by the contractor and then stored in their file. The way that we're gonna do this is using Nintex Sign powered by Adobe Sign. In this case, we're going to use the Git Signature action, and we'll add this to our Sign and Store branch. Before we configure our Nintex Sign action, we actually do wanna grab the display name of the user that uploaded that file. The way we'll do this is we'll actually go back up to the start event and add a new parameter that we can then use in our workflow. Now that we have the display name from our start event, we can go ahead and configure our Git signature action. We'll then provide the display name from our start event, as well as the email, update the recipient role to signer, and then update the recipient identity authentication to email. We'll go ahead and give it the agreement name of new signed agreement, and then we can provide a custom message for the signer here within the message section. We'll go ahead and update our days until expiry from 180 to 30. And while I'm not going to password protect this document, we could. Instead, we'll go ahead and we'll jump down to our document template and we'll select the file that is hosted in our box folder. If you would like a copy of this template, you can find it within the description of the vendor onboarding template within the Nintex Process Accelerator Gallery. Finally, we'll go ahead and configure a couple outputs and then configure the actions that will go within each one of these outcome branches. In this particular example, we're gonna send an email back to the submitter if the process has been expired after that 30 days or if they have aborted the signing process just to let them know that if they want to do this process again, they will need to submit another document. Otherwise, we'll go ahead and send a email both to the customer and to our internal employee, letting them know that the document has been signed and then stored within their box folder. This email configuration will be very similar to the ones that we've done earlier in this walkthrough. Finally, we'll go ahead and use the store a file action to store the signed document back into their box folder. Our source will be the signed files from the Nintex sign action, and then our destination's folder path will be contracts and then the workflow instance ID as a subfolder. And we'll go ahead and we'll overwrite these files. And with that, we've essentially finished configuring our vendor onboarding workflow. One last optimization trick that you could do is instead of using three change states here at the end, we could go ahead and pull those all down into a single change state after the get signature. 
While not necessary, it is just some best practices that you can add to your workflow design practices. And of course, remember, we also want to make sure that our actions have unique and identifiable names. We hope this walkthrough has been helpful in your workflow design process, and we can't wait to see what you build in the future.